glasses to put on. There's a 3D effect if you... <laughs> <laughs> Just like that movie Avatar. Okay. Blue people? <laughs> True. Yeah. No, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right, you're right. Okay. Let's have a look here. Uh, so last time we talked a bit about the different types of energy and there's two important types we really care about and that's uh, kinetic and potential energy which we did talk about last time so if you can write this title down please yeah. Yeah. got that? Okay, so, do you, we remember what type of energy is kinetic? I mean to say, yeah, for movement. Yeah. And potential? Yeah. How high it is, you know. Uh, so, let's see. If an object's moving, then it has kinetic energy. And this energy is from some work being done on the object. That is... The kinetic energy is the work done to give it that energy. So if you want to know how much kinetic energy something has, you need to know how much work was done to give it that energy. Because remember we said the energy doesn't, uh, is not created or destroyed, it just changes form. Yeah. So in other words, the picture is like this. If this is at rest, it has zero <coughs> kinetic energy. And then if this is moving here with a, uh, the speed of V, then it has kinetic energy. How much energy does it have? Well, where did it get this energy from? Probably because some work was done to it. So the kinetic energy this has will equal the work done to give it this speed. And by using this formula, we can actually find a formula for kinetic energy. So if I want to know what kinetic energy is, that's equal to how much work is done uh, to go from, from 0 to V. So to push it up to the speed. Let's work this out. Well, we should remember the formula for work. What is this? F. F by the distance. And the distance we don't know, so I'll just call it F. Well, this isn't really too helpful. Um, but Newton says F is a uh, MA. So we, we have MAS. Okay, that's still not so helpful. Uh, but remember, we have the formula V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And here, because it starts at zero, the U is zero. So we get V squared equals 2AS. So I can write this as a half m 2as. In other words, I can just put this and this here. That will make 1. And all I do is just uh, put brackets around the as. And the reason I did that, I hope you can see, is because now I have this piece. But I know what this piece is. What is it? It's v squared. So we end up with this formula, a half m v squared. And that is the formula for kinetic energy. A formula you might have seen before in high school. This is the kinetic energy formula. So if I want to know how much kinetic energy there is, I can just use this formula. And what's nice about this formula is I don't need to know the distance. I don't need to know the acceleration. I just need to know how fast it's going and how big it is. That's all. Uh, so a nice short little proof. I'd like you to write this down. Actually, it's a nice little proof. It's not a. Uh, it's not that. Not that difficult. Okay. So can you write this down, please? You got this? Yeah. You've seen this formula before? 
No, it's the first time. Well, for you, I know it is. <laughs> but for this guy over here, you guys have seen this before? Now, have you seen the proof, though? Or you were just given the formula as a fact? Here it is. Formula. Huh? As a fact. Here's the formula. Yeah. No proof. <laughs> it's possible. Uh, okay, continue. Oh, who else am I waiting for? Okay. If I'm waiting for you, Bruce, yeah. I'll stop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what topic are you on in chemistry now? Intermolecular bonds? Yeah. There's four types, right? Yeah. That's what I meant. Three types. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, no, you you see, you don't know about the fourth type yet. So <laughs> advanced. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have the formula, and we have kinetic energy, a half mv squared, which I didn't actually write there, but you have it from this page here. Right. So the next one now is potential energy. So the reason something has potential energy. So at the beginning, it was here. And the potential energy is zero. It can't do anything. But if I hold it here and let go, it could now do work. Yeah. So now here it has potential energy, uh, which is not zero, because of the height. So where did it get this potential energy from? It didn't just get it by magic. Where did it get it from? Kinetic. Could be kinetic, perhaps, yeah. Again, just like in the last example, because somebody kick <laughs> a kick, yeah. Because somebody did work to it. So the potential energy it has will equal the work done uh the work done to go from zero, zero to H. Okay, so the formula is force by distance. This time I know the distance. It's H. Now, what about the force? It's the weight. Why? Yeah, the force lifting up here must equal the weight. Because if these are equal, it will be at rest or moving at a constant speed. This is Newton's first law. So Newton said if these are balanced, it will either be at rest or moving up at a constant speed. Yeah. So it means the F here will equal the weight, but the weight equals mg. mg. And now we have our second formula. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Does the proof make sense? Yeah. It's not a, it's not a long proof. Yeah. Waiting for two people. Or three people. You're just doodling. Okay, continue? Great. Uh, so we have our formula. <coughs> yeah, so we, we've, we've looked at how much energy it has. Now, potential energy, there's actually more to the story for potential energy. Um. Person. <laughs> uh, there's three pictures here. The first one 
there's a height. The second one, the height is zero. And then this one here, the height is less than zero. Now in this picture here, the potential energy will be positive. In this picture here, the potential energy is zero. And here, the potential energy is actually negative. In other words, the point I want to make is that the sign is very important, very important. Because there's a huge, huge difference between 10 joules and minus 10 joules. A huge difference. The difference is, if the potential energy is positive, then he has the ability to do work. The work done to him will probably be the force breaking his bones. This one here has no potential energy. In this picture here, he can neither do work, you know, but he, he is, there's no, it's kind of like stable. There's nothing really happening. He's free, yeah. But this one here is quite interesting. When the potential energy is negative, we say the person or the mass is trapped. Literally, in this picture, trapped at the bottom of a hole. So it is important if the potential energy is positive or negative because it tells us sort of a situation we're in. Zero potential energy represents the person being free, neither trapped nor not trapped. Positive can do work, negative is trapped. So the three different situations are, whoops, firstly, positive. Then we say the object has potential energy. Zero, then we say the object is free. Negative, we say the object is trapped. And to be even more technical, we say it's trapped in a potential well. Potential well means a, a negative potential energy. So I do need you to write these down. They're very important facts. So important, you'll see them again in another slide later. But they're very important, so if you can write these down. Did you write them down? Show me. Did you write them down today? No. Can you please? No, I'm lazy. Oh, please, please. I'm lazy too, but you know, we've got to do it. No, you don't do it. Ah, come I did on. I've the picture before. And don't you like it? Yeah, I like it. Well, I can't. I think I don't like it. No. Just like you can't say, I don't want to write it down. Same situation. Well, I read it down. Today. <laughs> Today. Fine, fine. Thank you, You're Bruce. Happy, okay. It'll make me so happy. Um, you've done ionization in chemistry? Yeah. Yeah? So you know en ionization energy, is, well actually what, what would you give me as the definition of ionization energy? Say again? To lose Don't be shy. To, or to lose or to get uh, electrons? Yes. Anything else? Is this the full sentence? Like what? Change it, yeah. <coughs> I thought you did it, no? Mm -hmm. stable. So when I said, have you done it in chemistry? And you say, yes. I okay. <laughs> uh, but you know it. Yeah. No, you don't know it. So you haven't done it in chemistry. Really? Are you sure you haven't done it in chemistry? <coughs> ionization energy? With Lorraine? No. 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 Ionization. ionization. Yeah, have you, okay, let me be clear, sorry. Have you done ionization or ionization or ionizing or any <laughs> variation of the word ionize? Ionic bonds. Ionic bonds, okay. <laughs> but have you talked about freeing electrons? No, I Freeing an electron from an atom. Have you talked about this? Yeah. Yeah, so when an electron leaves the same. Yes, when the electron leaves its shell, how do you describe this or what do you say? What's it? 
that's not interesting. No, <laughs> it's key. Escape, yeah. So what, what I'm trying to say is, when you have your atom and you have your electron, yeah, like this, what type of energy does this electron have? Potential. It has yeah. potential and <laughs> kinetic. <laughs> But even when you add the kinetic and the potential together, the total is still negative. Why? Because it's still trapped. So if you want to free it, you need to give it energy. Yeah. For example, if it was minus one joule, then how much energy will it need to be free it? One, one, joule. one joule. This is the ionization energy. The energy you need to give it to free it because it's negative to make the energy zero. Yeah? Oh. You didn't go into this detail. No. Okay, but you got the idea. Yeah. So it starts off negative and you have to give it that much to make it zero so it can be free. Oh. The, 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 the first share is the, first, the energy, energy level of first share is just minus one. Whatever, it's a big number. Yeah. And then on the next shell, it's also minus. It's also minus, but smaller. Yeah, smaller. So and so on and so on. So when the electron is in the outermost shell, it requires the least energy to be free of, mm -hmm. which makes sense because it's already further away from the center. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we've looked at this with my beautiful picture. The conservation of energy implies that the total energy at the start and the end is the same. So, as a formula, you could actually think of it like this. That um, the kin uh, energy at the start equals the energy at the end. Or in other words, the kinetic plus the potential at the start should equal the kinetic plus the potential at the end. Now, there is an important uh, condition here. The system needs to be isolated. Does anyone know what I mean here when I say isolated? No external force, yeah. Or no external supply of energy. So for example, if you look at this room, and if I, um, if I throw this in the room, as it moves it has kinetic energy. Where did it get this kinetic energy from? From my arm, which got the energy from the food in my stomach. So in total, the energy stays the same. That the energy this gains equals the energy I lose here. Okay? Because the system is isolated. However, if I open the window and wind blows in and moves the pen, then the energy is not conserved in the room. There's more energy in the room. This has kinetic and it got it because the window was open because energy came in from the outside. So what I mean is, by isolated, that there's no energy or force going in from the outside. It's, it's like a room. Everything's contained inside of it. Now, you might say in real life, it's difficult to have anything isolated. Like if you think about, you know, this room, it's not isolated. Because there's energy coming in from the sun, and there's energy going out with heat. It's kind of difficult to have isolated systems. You know, it doesn't happen naturally. Ideal. But it's ideal, yeah. But roughly speaking, this is the formula. So if you can write this down, uh, this is it's just conservation of energy as a formula. Okay, got that formula? Yep, so let's continue. Uh, so let's have a look at our first example. 
A one kilogram ball is dropped from a height uh, from rest from a height of ten meters. Okay, so our first example is like this. We have a ball here, it's one kilogram, and this height is ten meters. Part A is what is the potential energy initially? So the potential energy at the top. Okay, so what formula? Well, that's just the MGH, uh, which will be 98.1 joules. Okay. B, how much kinetic energy does it have initially? No, initially, at the beginning. Zero. C, how much potential energy does it have at the moment of impact here? Zero. Zero joules. And D, the kinetic energy at the moment of uh, at the moment of impact. So the kinetic energy here. Yeah. I mean, you could work it out. Conservation. Yeah, but by conservation of energy, it's not necessary. You know, it must be ninety-eight point one because the total here has to be the same as the total here <coughs> if it starts here and finishes here so it is not necessary to calculate the V you can know that the kinetic energy must be 98.1 yeah. the only exception would be is if some energy was lost maybe as heat or sound then the answer would be less than 98.1 but if it's isolated then so this is a little, a little simple example. If you can write this one down, we'll have a look at another example. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would happen is, if the ball bounces up, then it switches again. It starts to lose kinetic energy and then gains potential energy. Now in real life it won't bounce as high as it did before. What's happening there is during the part where it hits the ground some energy is lost into the ground by heat and sound. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get shot back up as fast as it, as it hit the ground to begin with. But does it gain energy from the ground? Uh, no, it can only lose it to the ground. Yeah. Even if the ground was a trampoline, it would still lose it to the ground. If it was a trampoline. The only difference being a trampoline is it would have a chance to get as high as it did it was previously. Because the trampoline is because it's stretchy, it, it has a chance to get back up. But it won't go higher than what it was. It won't lose as much, yeah. But you might be wondering how come people can jump higher on the trampoline? <coughs> and the well, yeah, because well, it's actually because uh, when we hit the trampoline, uh, we can bend our legs in such a way as to try and push ourselves back up. In other words, we're trying to jump off the ground again. But the energy is all from us, not from the trampoline. Yes, yeah, all from exactly. Yeah. So you would know this because you'd be quite tired after jumping on a trampoline. So you are using up energy going to kinetic energy. Um, okay, continue. Yes? Yep. A 200 gram bullet is fired horizontally from a height of 10 meters at 100 meters per second. How fast is it going when it hits the ground? So let me just draw that to make sure you're clear. It's like the cliff one. We have a cliff here. This is 100 meters. And it's fired horizontally uh, at, oh sorry, not 100 meters, it's only uh, 10 meters, uh, at 100 meters per second. And it's 200 grams. And it'll go dun 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 dun, dun and then land here. 
And my question is, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? Okay, so we did a question like this in projectiles. The car going off the cliff. You, that was one of the questions. We don't have to use UVATS for this. We can use conservation of energy. What energy does the bullet have here? Um, potential and kinetic. Potential and kinetic. So it has M G H plus a half M 100 squared equals. And what energy does it have here? Kinetic. Just kinetic. A half M V squared. So the V would be square root. Uh, let me see, that's 0 0.1, isn't it? Yeah. So this would be all over 0 0.1. Uh, let, uh, that's 0 0.2 times 98.1 plus 0 0.1 times 100 square. square. I don't need a calculator. I can do this. Okay. 196.2 plus 1000. At square root of 10196.2, which is 100. Is point what? 19.32. I knew that. Uh, thank you. 19. Are you sure? No, I think I was right. 196.2. Plus one oh 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 oh. Are you sure? No. No. I think it's about a hundred point. Yeah, he's right. He's right. No, he didn't write the zero point one. He didn't write the zero point one. I'll just wait for the calculator to catch up with me. <laughs> Let me know when you get there. Uh, what is square root of 10196.2? About 100.5? How did you calculate it? I guessed. One. I mean... Uh, 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 0.1. 
trick you into thinking it's a projectile problem when it's not actually. How would you would you mention that it's an arc? No, the key, okay, the key word here is you're looking for the speed, not the velocity. So you don't care about the direction at impact, just its total speed. So the key word is that you're looking for the speed. So, like, if there's an angle of 30 degrees, we don't have to use, like, the uh, sine 30 and we just use the speed. Okay. Yeah, so you can see why it's a useful rule to have. Yeah. And sometimes, to be honest, sometimes when I'm doing exam questions, I too would forget that I could actually use this rule to get the speed. Because you kind of go into autopilot and you look at it and go, oh, it's projectiles, I'll do a projectile one. Then sometimes I have to remind myself, oh no, actually, I can use conservation of energy here, it's much quicker. So just, you know, just, just be mindful of that. Uh, okay. A block is placed on the top of a wedge of 30 degrees. The longest space is two meters. How fast is the block going when it reaches the bottom of the wedge? So I'll draw the picture here, and I'll let you try this before I do it, because I think you have the idea now. You have a wedge, and on the wedge is a block, and the angle here is 30 degrees, and the face is two meters long. And I want to know how fast is this going when it gets to the bottom. That's what I want. Hi, one. Try. Write it down. Oh, Bruce. No calculator? What is two sine thirty? Is it one? What's the question? What's the V here? <laughs> sine thirty is one over two. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell you. You don't need the math. You actually don't need it. Yes, the angle is needed here. Oh, we do need this angle for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if this angle is bigger, this will be going faster. I mean, think about it. If the angle was zero, then it wouldn't move. Hmm? Did you? What did you get? 4.429. Sounds reasonable. Anyone else got an answer? Yeah. Oh, come on. I think you're making this harder than it is. Let's have a look. What energy does it have up here? Potential. And here? Kinetic. So the kinetic at the bottom must equal the potential at the top. Now, we can see we don't need the M's. So the V is square root 2GH. So that's square root 19.62 times H. Now, what is the H? Well, this, yeah, if you want to be particular about it, this side is 2 cos 30, and this side is 2 sine 30. 2 sine 30 is equal to 1 meter. So that H is a 1. So it's square root of 19.62, which is 4.14, is it? Yeah, 4.4. 4.427. 4.427? Yeah. That's the answer. Ah, uh, you look confused. I don't really want you to look confused. What's confusing here? We're okay here? Did you get it? Did you? What happened? Like, I want to know at what point did it break for you? 
You thought the M was what? It is mass. Okay. Did you get it over here? Yes? You can be honest with me. You got it, yeah? You asked me... Can you, can you say huh? Can you say it? makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You were asking me about the mass. You can see why we don't need the mass. Yeah. Uh, am I right in thinking you maybe tried to get each of these separately rather than make them equal? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what I thought. So you were trying to get potential energy here and kinetic energy here separately. And of course you would need the mass to do that. Yeah. But by making them equal, then we can actually cancel the mass then. How does this one go for you? Did you get it? Yes? No. Where, no. I'm just, I want to know where did it break? Like, what was the breaking point in the question? Oh, when, when he said that we should use the angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. But you can see the purpose of the angle is to get the height, mm -hmm. which we need. Uh, okay. So, you can try these questions now. There's a couple of minutes left. So why don't you have a look at the questions in the workbook and get a start on them. I can close this. Yeah.